welcome to Verdict 2014, our special election bulletin. Let us begin by taking a look at the headlines. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to hit the campaign trail in Haryana and Maharashtra on 4th of October. Modi to address 10 rallies in Haryana and another two dozen in Maharashtra. As Congress prepares to release its manifesto in Haryana, Chief Minister Bupinder Singh Hooda says he is confident the party will win a third term. Campaigning picks up in both states. BJP President Amit Shah addresses rally in Hisar as MNS Chief Raj Thakre also hits the campaign trail in Amravati. And ahead of the assembly elections in Maharashtra, Rajya Sabha TV focuses on the key campaign issues in Vidarbha region. Today is the last day of withdrawal of nominations for the assembly elections in Maharashtra and Haryana. In Maharashtra, the election commission cleared the names of close to 6,500 candidates while a little over 1,500 will be in fray in Haryana. In Haryana, 47 candidates withdrew their nominations yesterday. After scrutiny, some uh, prominent names also found their names struck off. Take a look. Nomination papers of as many as 6,494 candidates in the fray for assembly polls in Maharashtra were found valid after scrutiny yesterday. In all, 1,152 nominations were rejected. The total number of candidates who filed nominations from 288 assembly constituencies was 7,646. Senior leader and spokesperson of NCP Ankush Kakade's nomination was declared invalid after scrutiny. Kakde's nomination was rejected as he had missed adding a mandatory election affidavit to his nomination forms. Considered a close confidant of NCP Chief Sharad Pawar, Kakde missed the 3 p.m. deadline on Saturday to submit the affidavit in time. The rejection of Kakde's nomination papers for the prestigious Kasaba Pet seat has assumed a political hue as it has subsequently left Deepak Mankar as the NCP candidate in the fray. In Haryana, a total of 1,565 candidates remained in the fray for the assembly polls on October 15th. The election commission said 360 nominations were rejected during scrutiny. Out of the total number of candidates, 162 were female contestants. Besides Chief Minister Bupinder Singh Huda, the key contestants include Ajay Singh Yadav, ML Khathar, Abhay Singh Chautala, former Union Minister Vinod Sharma, Kuldeep Bishnoi and Gopal Kanda. Haryana is set to witness a multi-cornered contest this time. BJP is testing electoral waters in Haryana on its own for the first time by fielding candidates in all 90 assembly seats. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha Television. And as election fever reaches a pitch, Prime Minister Narendra Modi will lead the BJP in both Haryana and Maharashtra from 4th of October. Modi is scheduled to address 10 rallies in Haryana and another two dozen rallies in Maharashtra. On the first day of this campaign, he will address four rallies, one in Haryana and three in Maharashtra at Kolapur, Bid and in Mumbai. Party veterans LK Advani and Murli Manohar Joshi will also join the campaign in Maharashtra. However, they might not campaign in Haryana. Party chief Amit Shah and other top leaders including Union Ministers Rajnath Singh, Nitin Gadkari, Sushma Swaraj and Arun Jaitley will also be in the field to pitch for BJP. Well, let us now get you all the news from Haryana first. The Congress party will release its poll manifesto in Haryana today. The chairman of the manifesto committee, Dr. Ram Prakash, claimed that the party will form the government in the state for the third time in a row. Eyeing a hat-trick in Haryana, Dr. Prakash claimed that people identify themselves with the Chief Minister Bupinder Singh Hooda. The 75-year-old leader also claimed that all the promises made during the previous assembly elections have been fulfilled. And unfazed by the drubbing suffered by Congress in the Lok Sabha elections earlier this year, two-time Haryana Chief Minister Bupinder Singh Hooda is confident of uh, the party retaining power in the upcoming assembly polls and rules out any scope for any alliance. Hooda insists that the state has uh, prospered under his 10-year rule and claims there is no anti-incumbency. At the same time, the party is planning to offer a number of lucrative uh, sops to the people in its manifesto, including a promise of building two lakh houses in rural areas and one 
1.5 lakh houses in cities for the economically weaker sections. तो ये क्यों नहीं बता रहे हैं कि उनका यहाँ भारतीय जनता पार्टी का मुख्यमंत्री कौन होगा उनके पास कोई ऐसा है नहीं सिर्फ लोगों को गुमराह कर रहे हैं कोई ऐसा व्यक्तित्व है नहीं जो मुख्यमंत्री पद संभाल सके Well, with assembly elections just around the corner, campaigning by parties has picked up pace, and so have poll promises. Well, at a rally in Karnal in Haryana, the BJP announced that it will provide interest-free loan loans to farmers if voted to power in the state. The announcement was made by BJP in charge of Haryana elections, Kailash Vijay Vargia, in presence of party president Amit Shah, who later made an emotional appeal to the voters in the state. Shah said that his party will introduce all welfare schemes executed in the BJP. BJP governed states to ensure multi-dimensional development of Haryana, stressing that it was a payback time as Haryana voters had ensured the BJP's victory on seven of the ten Lok Sabha seats in the state. The BJP, however, is yet to release its manifesto. This part of the Janata Party, nothing in the past is over. Haryana is now. This part. My colleague uh, Vishal Dhaya is now uh, joining us on the phone line uh, from Uchna Kalan in Haryana. Vishal, now Congress Party is going to release its manifesto today in Haryana. What are the issues that are likely to come up in this manifesto? Well, uh, it would be uh, really interesting to see as to what Congress promises uh, because the Congress is uh, going to, uh, you know, is facing a ten-year. Uh, Uh, you know, or anti incumbency due to a ten-year rule in the state. Uh, one thing which is uh, quite likely to come up in uh, the Congress's poll manifesto is its achievements. Uh, uh, the Congress has been, uh, you know, uh, in, in in the campaign in the last seven to ten days in the state. The Congress leaders have been highlighting uh, uh, the works being done by the uh, Congress government led by Bhupendra Singh Hooda over the over the over the last nine and a half years. But then uh, the Congress will also have to try and uh, you know uh, woo voters uh, with uh, more uh, you know promises. Of of uh, uh, un uh, unfinished works one two uh, the congress will also have to try and uh, you know we will be uh, uh, it will be really interesting to watch as to what congress brings about in its manifesto when it comes to uh, the issues of uh, corruption and black money these are the two issues which have been uh, you know raised prominently by the bjp Right. And, uh, and 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 uh, let's not forget that uh, one of the charges by the opposition against the Congress uh, has been uh, the issue of corruption only. So so these are the two issues which will uh, which uh, the Congress will have to tackle. We'll have to see, wait and watch when uh, the manifesto is being released uh, in a few hours from now. We'll see as to what exactly the Congress is standing on these two issues and what new promises the the, uh, the ruling party has to make uh, for the people of India. Right, Vishal, you stay with us. We'll just come back to you for more. Meanwhile, the ruling Congress in Haryana is facing an uphill task in these assembly elections. It could secure only one lok uh, seat uh, in the Lok Sabha elections in the home district of Chief Minister Bhupinder Singh Hooda. Well, BJP had won seven seats and INLD had secured two seats. Now, despite a big win in the Lok Sabha election, it doesn't seem to be a cakewalk for BJP as well. Our correspondent uh, Sham Sundar reports that the state could witness a multi-corner. not contest Congress is seeking a third term in Haryana when the state goes to polls on October 15th seeking a third term as chief minister Bhupinder Singh Hooda is leading the party's campaign this time too The party has launched an aggressive campaign to highlight the achievements of his government The major among them include the state's sports policy, its land acquisition policy and the old age pension scheme. Garib aadmiyon ke dalit ke bachchon ki padhai pehli jamaat se wazifa deta hu 20 lakh bachchon ko wazifa mil raha hai Haryana mein. 100 gaj ke plot dene ka kaam kiya. 10 lakh garib aadmiyon tak pani ka connection ka pahunchane ka kaam kiya. और अब भी यह फैसला कर रखा है दो लाख मकान गांव में और डेढ़ लाख शहरों में गरीब आदमियों के लिए बनाएंगे बहुत सारों को तो पहली किस्त मिल गई 
कोई भी हरियाणा में बगैर छत के नहीं रहेगा But it is going to be an uphill task for the Congress. Many senior party leaders like Inderjeet Singh, Birinder Singh and Avtar Singh Bhadana quit the party on the eve of elections accusing Huda of corruption and biased development. BJP is contesting elections on its own after breaking ties with Kuldeep Bishnoi's Haryana Janhit Congress. Despite a stellar performance in the Lok Sabha polls, the party does not have a strong grassroots base in the state. It also does not have a face to project as the next chief minister. Key leaders like Rao Inderjeet Singh and Birinder Singh have limited mass base. To add to the party's woes, there is discontent over ticket distribution. In fact, BJP is heavily dependent on the Modi magic to win here too. Haryana mein bhi 10 saal se कांग्रेस की सरकार चल रही है एक के बाद एक के बाद एक घोटाले मंत्रियों का जेल जाना हरियाणा के विकास को ठप करने का काम एक कांग्रेस की सरकार ने किया है हर बार हम 10-15 सीट लड़ते थे इस बार भारतीय जनता पार्टी 90 की 90 सीटें लड़कर भारतीय जनता पार्टी की सरकार बनाने के लिए लड़ती Meanwhile, the Indian National Lok Dal is hoping to bounce back. INLD is trying to garner sympathy for Party Supremo and former Chief Minister Om Prakash Chautala, who is convicted in the teacher's recruitment scam. The party has also fielded Nena Chautala, the wife of former MLA Ajay Chautala, the first time a woman from the family has entered the poll fray. Lok Sabha said, which is our party's leader in Lok Sabha, if we fight against the Lok Sabha, हम उससे भी ज्यादा अग्रेसिव होकर के विधानसभा के चुनाव कर रहे हैं Apart from the Congress, BJP and INLD, there are several smaller parties in the fray. Kuldeep Bishnoi's HJC and Haryana Jan Chetna Manch have formed an alliance. This alliance can influence at least two districts in the state. BSP and Gopal Kanda's Haryana Lokhit Party have also put up candidates. Sham Sundar's report for Rajya Sabha TV. All right, let's go back to my colleague Vishal Daya, who's uh, joining us on the phone line from Haryana. Uh, Vishal, uh, let's talk about the anti-incumbency factor here. Uh, considering the fact that the constantly Congress has been saying that there is nothing like an anti-incumbency, but the very fact uh, that uh, the drubbing they faced in the recent Lok Sabha elections and also that uh, this uh, tenure has gone uh, on uh, for 10 years, how important do you think will be this factor in as far as these assembly elections are concerned? Well, uh, denying the existence of an anti-incumbency sector has been the poll refrain of every ruling party, be it in the state or uh, at the centre. That's something which is a poll refrain and uh, which is uh, pretty much expected from the leaders of the ruling party. But if you look at uh, the situation in Haryana, uh, pretty much rightly pointed out in the report that it's, it's going to be a multi-cornered contest and that is something which is troublesome for the Congress. Uh, uh, one very uh, important point uh, which uh, might be bothering the Congress party is the resurgence of the BJP because if you look at the BJP's history in the state, uh, their electoral history in the state, uh, uh, you know, they, it has been uh, only once, uh, if I'm uh, right with the figures, uh, that they have been able to, uh, you know, uh, achieve uh, double-digit figures in uh, the Haryana Assembly. Last time around, they had only four MLAs, but... Uh, the Lok Sabha election results uh, uh, have, uh, you know, given a, a sort of... A to the BJP leaders in the state. Uh, mm -hmm. They won seven seats out of ten, as it was uh, said in the report. Uh, and, uh, um, you know, winning seven out of ten with Congress uh, ending up with just one seat, uh, and that to the hometown of uh, uh, the uh, chief minister. It seems uh, that uh, the uh, troubles are mounting for the Congress. Apart from that, uh, if you look at uh, the, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, the, the regional party in the National Lok Dal, led by Om Prakash Chattala, they won two seats uh, uh, amidst... Uh, it's the uh, so-called Modi wave right. in the Lok Sabha elections. So, so that is also that's also that also shows that despite the fact that the top leadership of the party is convicted, uh, there is some sort of uh, you know uh, strength left in INLD to challenge Cong Congress as well in, in the chart strongholds. Uh, so Absolutely. there will be a fight between Congress and INLD on the on the uh, on, on the chart vote bank. Uh, so Congress is uh, you know uh, going to be uh, cornered by both these two parties, and right. then let's not forget the nine and a half years rule and that end in convincing factor. So it's 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 uh, it's, it it's going to be a, a uh, you know. The corner contest, Vishal. Uh, thank you so much for those details. We'll keep coming back to you for more on that story. Meanwhile, we'll take a very short break here. Coming up ahead, all the news from the election-bound state of Maharashtra. Stay with us.
Welcome back after the break. You're watching Verdict 2014 and now the, all the news from the state of Maharashtra. Well, the Delhi High Court will hear a plea against quashing the Election Commission order on former Maharashtra Chief Minister Ashok Chavan today. Well, independent candidate Madhav Rao Kanhihalkar had moved the High Court against the verdict, setting aside the Election Commission's order, holding Ashok Chavan guilty of filing incorrect expenses for the 2009 Assembly elections. On 12th of September, the High Court had set aside the show cause notice issued to Chavan, saying that the poll panel failed to comply with the conduct of the election rules. According to the court rules, a candidate is entitled to an opportunity of an explanation within 20 days on whether expenses disclosed by him are correct or not. The BJP will get absolute majority by winning more than 180 seats in the upcoming assembly elections in Maharashtra. Now, this was claimed yesterday by the party's Maharashtra in charge, Rajiv Pratap Rudi. Rudi also claimed that his party will install a first single party government in the state after a span of 25 years. The party is contesting on 257 of the 288 seats in the state. The rest of the 31 seats have been allotted to its allies. BJP had severe ties with its long-time alliance partner, Shiv Sena last week over disagreement regarding a seat-sharing deal. Ruling out a split of votes, Rudy also refused to comment about the breakup. The manifesto of the Bharti Janta Party would be released on 3rd by the national president of the Bharti Janta Party. The target is to achieve a majority for the first time in 25 years and to give a stable government a one party government and that one party government is going to be the Bharti Janta Party in Maharashtra and the manifesto will take up this as a target clause. And now let us talk about the campaign trail. Well, MNS chief Raj Thakre uh, hit the campaign trail in Maharashtra. He addressed election rally in Amravati urging people to vote for his party. The party had won 13 seats in the assembly polls uh, held in 2009. And following their split in Maharashtra last week, the Congress and the NCP have started a fresh round of allegations and counter allegations. While the NCP has repeatedly blamed former Chief Minister Prithvi Rajavan for the split, Congress President Sonia Gandhi dismisses this allegation. She in turn uh, blames uh, the NCP for the 15 year old alliance parting ways. Only yesterday, NCP senior leader Sunil Tatkari had said that the Congress was not his party's political rival. हमारे वजह से नहीं ना मेरे वजह से ना राहुल के वजह से ना कांग्रेस पार्टी के वजह से तरह से बयान दिया है कि उनकी इच्छा ना ही थी ना राहुल गांधी की इच्छा थी हमें लगता है कि चौहान साहब की मंशा थी कि साथ में चुनाव ना लड़ा जाए पवार साहब खुद सोनिया जी से मिले थे उन्होंने इच्छा जाहिर की थी लेकिन महाराष्ट्र के स्थानिक लोगों की क्या इच्छा थी हमें पता नहीं हम सांप्रदायिकता के खिलाफ लड़ रहे हैं हम कांग्रेस के लोगों को इतना ही बताना चाहते हैं कि दुष्ट प्रचार ना करें आज हमारा गठबंधन किसी से नहीं है अकेले चुनाव लड़ रहे हैं इस बार पूरी ताकत से लड़ेंगे और अकेले सत्ता में आएंगे All right, my colleague Rajkamal Rao is now joining us from Pune for more on this. Rajkamal, with just a fortnight to go for the assembly elections in Maharashtra, what is the atmosphere like? We understand a lot of the top leaders of all the parties are hitting the campaign trail. Uh, Ashwarya, from tomorrow onwards, every political party will go to uh, campaign trails and uh, every political party's major leader will be touring in districts. Uh, for example, Congress party will take advantage of the Gandhi Jayanti tomorrow and uh, Dashara celebrations will be taken by BGP and Shiv Sena and they are planning to uh, hold rallies across Maharashtra state, uh, especially in Vidarbha region and Pune region where I am right now. Uh, every political party is trying to woo voters and uh, especially in Pune where I am uh, in, in the campaign trail today, the thing is, uh, the regional political parties like RPS, who 
who have left BJP are now rebelling against their own political party. They want to contest in independent seats. So the independent candidates will hold key uh, areas in, in contests where uh, four political parties are competing with, e with each other like Pune, uh, uh, Sholapur and Kolapur re uh, region and in Nagpur region. Four corner contests will be there. So independent uh, candidates will, will play a crucial role, Aishwarya. Right, Raj Kamala. Well, thank you so much for those details. We'll coming, uh, keep coming back to you for more on that. Meanwhile, people in Maharashtra's Vidarbha region have been demanding for a separate state for a long time now. But there has been no headway in the last 20 years. The issue returns to focus every time the state goes to polls. Here is a special report. Ever since Telangana became a state, the demand for statehood of Vidarbha has gained momentum. Unlike public rallies or agitations in Telangana, Vidarbha movement is largely on paper. People in Vidarbha are advocating for a peaceful solution to their demands. We are feeling that we are getting stepmotherly treatment and please see to it that if this doesn't, this continues this way, there is most likely that separate Vidarbha will get moment very fast and maybe a day will come that uh, though it is on paper, it will come on street, then it, will, it may take a violent turn, which is not good. In Telangana, so many people left, you know, they gave up their life. Mm -hmm. So after, say around, say, maybe a hundred people have died in that Telangana. Mm -hmm. Now they have come up with a state, fine. Mm -hmm. So what did they did wrong? That hundred people, who's accountable for their life? Mm -hmm. the, when you had to give it, does, do you want bloodshed on, you want people to die, you want uh, properties to be destroyed, then only you will understand that the demand is there. Vidarbha region in Maharashtra has 11 districts. Nagpur is the main divisional headquarter that served as the capital of old CP Berar state. It had the entire infrastructure in place in its capital city, Nagpur. Maharashtra ka budget ek lak pachis hajar crore se lekar ek lak chalis hajar crore tak ka salana budget banta hai. Us salana budget mein se दस हजार करोड़ रुपया भी विदर्भ के लिए महाराष्ट्र सरकार विकास के लिए नहीं निकालती है। विदर्भ का स्टेटहुड डिमांड गोस बैक तू 1950स। देश के दार कमिशन अपॉइंटेड बाय यूनियन गवर्नमेंट एंड फर्स्ट स्टेट्स रिओर्गनाइजेशन कमिशन हेडेड बाय जस्टिस फाजल अली रेकमेंडेड विदर्भ एस अ सेपरेट स्टेट कंसिडरिंग द अनटैप्ड वेल्थ पापुलेशन एरिया एंड डिस्टेंस फ्रॉम कैपिटल एस पर द इकोनॉमिक सर्वे ऑफ महाराष्ट्र 2012 विदर्भ रीजन जनरेट्स 10 According to Vidarbha Economic Development Forum, the region's population figures are similar to that of Punjab and Chhattisgarh. The GDP of the region is more than that of Chhattisgarh. But presently, it is the second most underdeveloped region in India. Situated about 10,000 kilometers from Mumbai, the region is a less preferable destination for industries. I mean, the reasons are sheer political in nature. Nobody wants to leave Bombay. Nobody wants to, uh, you know, uh, break up. All political parties, when they are not in power, they are the first ones to uh, promise us uh, to fight for the cause of Vidarbha statehood. But the moment they get into power, the scene is entirely different. Uh, only 6% employment is there, if you see. Yeah. Per capita income is lowest. The region which was a developed region has now gone to a stage which is now underdeveloped. It's not even semi-developed. Political parties like BJP, Shiv Sena and Congress had promised that they will support the creation of a separate state. Nitin Gadkari and Babu Rao Mutemwar went on to give it in writing during Lok Sabha polls. But no one came forward after polls. Experts say that the political intensity shown by TRS or GMM is missing here. Government of India have not done anything for it. The Bharatiya Janta Party who are running the Godis government and leading the country have assured to the Vidarbhaids that if their government will come in the majority, they will definitely do the separate state of Vidarbha. Negligence has led to unemployment in the region. It is one of the regions why Garchiroli district became a safe house for left-wing extremists. People says statehood can be the only solution to the end of the crisis. People in Vidarbha region have been demanding a separate state for Vidarbha. But lack of political will and lack of public movement has made it only limited to paper. 
विद कैमरा पर्सन शिव कुमार राजकमल राव राज्यसभा टीवी and farmers in the vidarbha region face a deep financial crisis the ever increasing debt burden has forced several in the last 2 years to end their lives as well here is a special report on the farmers financial crisis in vidarbha region cotton grower sham rao has borrowed this piece of land he is sowing on Rao hopes that this next crop will give him yield to pay back the debt he has amassed over the past 4 years. Rao had taken a debt of 2 lakh rupees from a money lender in 2010 which he could not repay. Unable to pay, Rao's cousin committed suicide in 2010. To add to the debt, the rate for borrowing land is not cheap. He has had to pay a guarantee of fifty thousand rupees to a fellow farmer for this land. ऐसे क्या वो गास्तकारी लगाते हैं? जी. पानी से बोए जाते हैं? हाँ. इसलिए ले आत माता कर जाते हैं कोई कोई. अच्छा मतलब पैसे नहीं मिलता? हाँ पैसे नहीं मिलता अब ये देख दे मार हमारा वो खेत देखो. हाँ. पूरा आधा आधा खेत पानी से गया. हाँ. ठेका से वो ठेके वाले से ठेका दे देना पड़ Maharashtra's Vidarbha region has lost at least 3000 farmers in the last 6 7 years to unpaid debts. Farmers borrow from money lenders at high interest rates making themselves vulnerable. Mahesh Sangram, an agriculture awareness volunteer, gives us the reasons behind growing numbers of suicides. Kam se kam 800 se jyada rupaye lagte hain aur kya ek ek kar ko kharcha kam se mein mein to aata hai wo चालीस के आसपास आता है चालीस हजार के आसपास आता है इससे वजह से कपास इतना पैसे जो मिलता है होता ही नहीं इसकी वजह आत्महत्या करते हुए द महाराष्ट्र गवर्नमेंट हैज पास द मनी लैंडिंग एक्ट टू कीप अ चेक ऑन इंडिविजुअल मनी लैंडर्स अंडर द एक्ट मनी लैंडर्स विल बी इम्प्रिजेंट फॉर फाइव ईयर्स फॉर इम्पोजिंग एलिवेटेड इंटरेस्ट रेट ऑन फार्मर्स द एक्ट हैज अ रेट्रोस्पेक्टिव इफेक्ट गोइंग बैक टू नाइनटीन This election season farmers are demanding a compensation package for delayed monsoon and they want the government to effectively control money lenders. Farmer suicides have been a sad reality of Vidarbha region in Maharashtra. Previous governments have implemented schemes to reduce the number of suicides but they have not been succeeded. In this time in the upcoming assembly polls farmers have high expectations from the next government. With camera person Shiva Kumar Rajkamal Rao Rajya Sabha TV. Well, that's all in this edition of Verdict 2014. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.